Hey, this is Mrs. Clark, and I'm just here to walk you through these lessons in case you have not seen them already. This is lesson number one, getting started, navigation and menus. I have been through three sets of screens before arriving at this screen. Um, but this screen is telling you about the different menus. So if you look here under the Tinkercad logo, you can see several menu options. We they're grayed out right now because we don't have any shapes on our work plane. This is the view cube. And here are different options for viewing as well. So you can bring a box out or whatever shape you like if you want to play with these views a little bit. And then you see you get the inspector menu. Um, you can drag the work plane using the view cube so that you can look at all different angles of your cube. If you want to go back to the original view, you just click home. Okay, this will center you on your cube. Um, these are manual zoom buttons, so I can zoom out. If I want to go back to that original view, I can just click home, and this will take you to a flat view. Okay, we don't really use this view very often. And that this one will allow you to move in. You can also just right click and then drag your plane around as well. Okay. So we're going to click. I don't know if I can move this. Next. So this is just explaining about the grid lines. Okay, you've got major grid lines, which are the dark blue grid lines and one millimeter grid lines that are the smaller light blue. You can change the sizing of your grid by clicking down here on edit grid. We're not gonna change it now, but you could change it to inches, you could change it to bricks. Okay. I'm gonna click next. So this is where it's going to teach you that the views you're using or the words their terms are using in Tinkercad are the same as in movie production. So they're going to ask you to um, change your camera view. You can tilt, you can rotate, rotate, pan, and zoom. So they're just going over the view cube use. Okay, you can click on a side of your view cube and it will turn your view cube in case you don't want to drag it. You can see those little arrows come around and my work plane is moving in a, in response to how I click on my view cube. And again, if I want to go back to that original view, I just click home. And if I don't like being that far out, I can zoom back in. Oops. Okay, that's all it said there. And then it's teaching you about these hints. So let me get rid of our cube that we dropped in. These orange shapes are called hints. And when you're working through Tinkercad lessons, these hints will help you know where to place objects. So if you wanted to drag out these objects, you're welcome to. You can grab a cone and place it in the cone area. If you want to make sure, you can see that my cone is off. I want to center my view on my cone, so I'm going to click my cone, and then I'm going to click this box that centers my view. So now I'm looking right at my cone, so I can make sure that I'm placing my cone in this place where it's supposed to be. Again, you can see I'm having a little difficulty getting it lined up just right. And that has to do with the snap grid. So I'm going to go ahead and change. You can see down here in the right hand corner, it says one millimeter snap. Well, I'm going to make it the smallest snap because I want to be able to move this a little bit. Now, another way you can move your items rather than dragging them with your mouse is to use your arrow buttons. So I can just nudge my shape into place that way. And now when I circle around it, I can see that it is properly in place and I can go back to my home view to look at the other objects and you can go ahead and play with those objects 
to practice placing them in the hints. And then when you're done, you can click next. We're going to get rid of that cone. So it's telling me the hint wants you to grab a cube and place it in the center of the work plane. So we're going to explore the shapes menu over here. You can see right now it's set on basic shapes, but if you click on it, you can drag it down. There are other shapes you can use in Tinkercad, text and numbers. Okay, but for now we want basic shapes because we need a box. And again, I'm going to do my best job to line it up with the hint. Looks pretty good. It might be a little. So again, I'm going to use my arrow keys to nudge it. It's a little easier to move with nudge when you're doing fine movements. And remember, you can always change your snap grid so that you're moving in very small increments with each nudge. That allows me to place things in the hint box. Next, rotate and check. So we've done that. So we said, let's take a closer look by zooming in. That I've already done that. Okay, if I wanted to go back out, I could click the home button. If I wanted to center on this specific item, then I would click the center. Now I'm looking, this, the box is the center of my view. So a lot of students have told me they don't know how to do the centering thing. It's a very helpful tool. All right. You can use your mouse pad. You can use that pinching motion on your mouse pad. If you have a touch screen, you can use it on your touch screen or you can use a scroll in your mouse. I don't have a touch screen and I don't have um, a um, mouse pad. So I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse. But remember, you can also use these buttons. Plus and minus will help you scroll in and out from your design. Okay, so you can Rotate, pan, and zoom. If you move your mouse over the work plane and click drag your right mouse button, then your, your camera will rotate and tilt. So let me go out to the home view. This is tilt. Okay, I'm tilting it up and I'm tilting it down. Okay, I can also rotate. Okay, you can rotate it this way as well, up and down. I guess that's tilt. Okay. And then this really is a good tip. You can pan by holding the mouse wheel and dragging. So you have to click shift to pan. So you click, let me click off of that, shift. And now I can drag my entire work plane around. Okay, this is called panning as opposed to rotating or tilting. So that's another way, another trick you can use to center, click, right mouse, and drag. So click shift, hold your right mouse button down and drag. And that's another way you can center on the shape if you don't remember to use the centering tool. So shift, and then a right mouse and drag. Right click on your mouse, okay. Next, the shape window gives you control over a number of properties of an object, including the color, visibility, transparency, and whole functions. So if we click on the shape window, here it is. We can click color. We can change the color of our shape. Okay. We can even turn it into a hole. So you can see that now you can see through that box. If I were to combine that box with another solid shape, it would make a square shaped hole in that other object. So it's no longer a solid. If I were to 3D print this, I would 3D print nothing. Okay. If I wanted it to be solid again, 
I just click the solid button and now if I were to 3D print this, I would get a cube. Okay. So we're going to explore working with objects in 3D space, which means not just moving them on the work plane, but moving them away from and even underneath the work plane. This can be tricky at first. So let's learn some tools to help us think in 3D. So we're going to need a second object. You can see there's a hint here. They've asked me to drag a sphere into the work plane. I like to be a little bit more zoomed in. So I'm going to grab a sphere from the basic shapes menu. And I'm going to drop it as best I can. But remember, I'm going to rotate around and look. I need to nudge it a little bit. So I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to use my right arrow keys to bump it into place. Much better, but I haven't seen the whole thing, so I'm going to continue to rotate. And I'm going to look at it underneath and all around, and it looks very good. Okay. And then continue to the next. Okay, and then it's explaining the 3D printer or 3D modeler salute, which helps you remember there are three axes because we're working in 3D. So there's the X axis which moves things from right to left. So you can translate objects. That means you move them from right to left. Okay. And there is the Y axis, which is back and forth. So if I grab my box right now and I move it along to the right and left, this is the X and Y axis. Okay. If I move it back, this is the Y axis. Okay. But we're working in 3D here, so there's also the Z axis. And if I want to, I can bring my object up and down. I can translate it along the Z axis as well. So translation is moving your object. Okay, and we talked about that along the x-axis. Now it's asking me to see how the, I'm going to close this shape inspector menu. And I'm actually going to use the center on this. It's asking me to move my sphere 11 millimeters off the work plane. So you do that by clicking on this button. Now you can click it and you can drag it and you can see that white box to the right here, that's counting how many millimeters I'm moving it. Now, if I want, I can continue clicking on this little cone and dragging, or I can go over here and I can just type 11.0 and it will automatically move my sphere for me. Now I had already moved it up. So let me move it back to the work plane. That's why that didn't work. I need it to be flat on the work plane in order for this to work. So I want it to be 11 millimeters. I had already used moved it one, right? So if I drag, I click on that and I start dragging. Now I put 11. It's gonna be in the, in the hint shape now. So again, you can see it's nice. It's got that orange outline all the way around it. It fits like a glove that is how I have moved. I have just translated my object along the Z axis. All right, translating along X and Y. So we are going to be moving. Again, when I move this box, you can see numbers telling you. So these, oops, these numbers tell you I have just moved it three millimeters to the right and 4.7 millimeters toward myself on the on the y-axis. Okay, if I move it this way, the numbers become negative because I'm moving it to the left and back away from me. Okay. So drag the sphere 30 millimeters so it sits on top of the cube. Well my cube's not placed where it's supposed to be anymore. So we could have a little bit of a an issue with that. But I think that's about where it originated. So I'm going to drag my sphere. Again, you can change the numbers or you can just drag with your mouse. It's up to you. Either way, you're going to want to check and it looks like I need to do a little nudging. 
So remember nudging is when I click on the item and then I use my arrow keys to center it. Now this box is supposed to be centered underneath that sphere. So I'm gonna use my arrow keys to nudge again. And I wanna make sure, yeah, it's, I've messed with this box too much. What I'm gonna do is another trick that's called aligning. I'm going to click on the box I'm going to click shift and I'm going to click on this sphere. Then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to use my aligning tool. See how it says align? And you can see that all of a sudden I've got these, there we go. I've got these axes and I can click on these axes and it will move around my shape. I can always undo. Okay, so if I had this box all the way over here and that was sphere was there and I didn't, um, I wanted to combine them, I would click, shift, select the sphere. You can see the big rectangle now indicating they're both selected and I would click the align button. And if I click this one, you can see it gives me a hint. What's it gonna look like after I click that button? If I click this one, What's it going to look like? If I click this one, what's it going to look like? Okay, so I want them to be like this. Oof, that's not really what I wanted them to be like, was it? So I'm going to need to align them twice. Um, I don't know why it's not aligning them properly. Sometimes you just have to play with the alignment. Where's my other axis? There we go. Okay, now I've got them where the tutorial wants me to have them. Okay. So now it's gonna talk about Boolean addition and subtraction. If I were to add these, in Boolean um, addition, what happens is I draw a box around them and you can see that selects them both. The other way to do that would be to hold shift and click on them both like I did a moment ago. This button up here is the grouping button. If I hit this button, it's gonna make those two shapes become one shape together. So you can see how they're now the same color. I can no longer separate that sphere from the box, okay? So it's addition because we have added the material of the sphere shape to the material of the block shape. Okay, I'm going to undo it. And instead what they want us to do is to make this sphere a whole. So I'm going to select that sphere and from the shape menu I'm going to select whole, change to whole. Okay, and now you can see that sphere is no longer a solid, it's a whole. You can see through it. All right, so now what they want us to do is to add the hole to the box. So again, I'm drawing that box around them to select both and I'm gonna group those two objects together. And now you can see that I have a divot. It has subtracted the part of the sphere that was embedded in the box from the overall shape. There you go. Okay, and this is just all the steps to do that. So now this is what it should look like. Mine's just not pink. If I wanna make it pink, I can. There we go. And as you can see, it's a box everywhere else. It's got that nice rounded shape. Continue to the next step. And there you go. That is the first lesson.